G'day, I'm Ian Smith. After a 40-something year career as a boat builder, I'm now building this 24-foot Ranger-class Gaff Sloot in my retirement. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I fitted the bulkheads. I'm going to show you three different types of bulkhead construction, as well as a variety of methods I use to determine their shape, which can be used for any flat surfaces that have to be shaped to fit the hull, like bunk tops, shelving and other furniture. The main bulkhead in the Ranger class is either side of the mast, and in most of the fleet it's simply constructed of wide boards tongued and grooved together. These are structural bulkheads, and although they're only a single layer, they haven't caused a problem in any of the other boats in the class, most of which are 70 to 80 something years old. Larger boats will generally have two or even three layers of bulkhead planking to build up the strength. First, you have to work out exactly where they'll go. It's best if they land on a deck beam, and I've also fitted a low cross beam at the forward bunk height to help locate them. On a hull like this with flat bent ribs, they usually don't land on a rib or frame, but are fitted to the hull and backed up with an added frame of larger dimension. I've laminated what I call grounds at the same thickness as the ribs. The edges of the bulkhead will land on this, and it will then be backed up with an added frame, actually a series of cleats fitted to the bulkhead and grounds between the stringers and fastened through the bulkhead and through the grounds and planking. I set up a temporary vertical post on each side where I wanted the bulkhead to come to, where I could comfortably fit three of the bulkhead planks. I made up a pattern for the outermost plank from scrap timber and hot melt glue. I'll show you a bit more on this technique shortly. The bulkhead planks to be joined needed to be planed dead straight and square before machining them for the tongue and groove. The outermost plank is roughly cut over size and the pattern laid on it, marked and cut out, remembering to measure and mark for any bevel needed to fit the whole side. I always cut conservatively away from the line and adjust it through several trial fits. You've also got to check it for being dead vertical and leaving the exact distance for the remaining boards. Once you're happy with it, you can start fitting the next board. You only have to shape the bottom edge of this board to fit the hull. I used a simple method using a ruler to mark the shape of the hull and fine-tuned it by scribing the shape with a pair of compasses. I temporarily fastened the first two boards in place before fitting the third one. I originally fitted the bulkheads in the one plane across the boat but it was going to interfere with the location of the heel of the mast, so I changed it to an alcove. The next bulkhead I made was for the aft end of the galley, and this was fitted up against the main cockpit beam and its supporting knee, and a vertical post led into the beam. It lands on a rib and a structural floor, but is not fastened to these. I built up a pattern for this one from scrap plywood and hot melt glue. Even a cheap glue gun like this, one I've had for many years, will do the trick. I marked the pattern on marine plywood, cut it out, and fitted it after several trial fits. A partial bulkhead was needed at the aft end of the starboard saloon bunk, and is only supported by the bunk and by the bunk backrest and shelf, so I needed to work out where it was going to hang in space until the other parts are fitted. A laser level's vertical line gave me the exact line to land it on a rib. For this one, I built up a pattern from thicker stock and screwed it together. 
with each section between stringers individually scribed and fitted. I built the bulkhead up from three layers of six millimetre or quarter inch timber, the outer layers being machined from hewn pine planking offcuts into V-jointed vertical staving, and the central layer from western red cedar laid horizontally. I chalked outside the pattern on the saw bench I was going to laminate the bulkhead on and dry fitted the three layers to make sure I covered the necessary territory before laminating it all together. I glued it with epoxy. Traditionally, this kind of bulkhead would have been built up on a more solid timber frame and if there was more than one layer, they would be bedded together on canvas soaked in lead paint or just bedded on white lead paste. I marked and cut out the bulkhead and fitted it as before. Any vertical bulkhead and any horizontal shelf or bunk can be shaped by building up a pattern by one of these methods. This one is the galley bottom shelf. For more simple shapes like this narrow outboard bunk top section, I find it easier to simply mark equal distances off the hull onto a scrap piece of ply, then cut the marine ply a bit oversized and scribe and worry it down. Don't forget there will usually be a changing bevel angle to measure and plane on the plywood. All of these bulkheads were fitted dry and then dismantled for priming and painting before final fitting. Now I haven't shown you every method for shaping bulkheads. When I was building laminated holes from scratch I found it easiest to loft out the main bulkheads and even most of the other vertical and horizontal dividers. Depending on your construction method you can either incorporate these into the setup and plank over them they're in effect permanent moulds, or trace them off and mark them on the plywood when needed, then they should fit into place with very little adjustment necessary. I've described this process in the strip planking section of my book on wooden boat building. Instead of building up a full pattern or template, you can use a joggle stick. Or you could build up an adjustable shape transfer like this old thing. But I haven't used either of these methods for many years now. Building up a full pattern from hot milk glue and plywood is definitely the best way to go for complicated shapes. I did this recently when replacing the cracked deck plank on my historical 18 footer replica Britannia. It needed to be an exact fit. The cabin sole also had to be shaped to fit around floor timbers and ribs. The construction of cabin furniture needs to be strong enough to support human bodies landing on them quite hard, but not so strong that they add loads of unnecessary weight to the boat. If your design has the furniture drawn on the construction plan, use those scantlings, by which I mean the sizes of the components used. If not, Find a similar boat with sound furniture and copy that. Often there are twisting loads on the hull which will affect the furniture as well. On a laminated hull I always bonded the bulkheads and much of the furniture to the hull. But on a traditional boat it's important to make sure that you can dismantle the furniture for access to the hull for repairs. In boatyards owners tend to get upset when you have to destroy furniture to make necessary repairs. My forepeak and saloon bunks and galley are all in, but I still have to add trim, fiddle rails and edging and so on. This will be the subject of another video.